One of President Trump's first acts in office was an order to prevent US aid cash going to NGOs that promote abortion as a method of family planning. The move won the applause of pro-life advocates, but it's been condemned by aid agencies and charities who say the ruling will have devastating consequences for their work in the developing world. Filmmakers Sarah Spiller and Callum McRae have been to find out why. Late September in Mozambique, Southern Africa. We've come here to find out about the impact of a far-reaching policy put in place by US President Donald Trump. Volunteers from an aid organization called Amodefa gather in the province of Gaza. They've poured their hearts and souls into a multi-agency project called Dreams. A key part of Amodefa's work to spread a message about contraception. We began filming, but neither we nor these volunteers had any idea about what was to happen next. Nós hoje estamos aqui para conversar um pouco convosco com relação a este programa Dreams, que nos próximos dias, precisamente daqui a três dias. Sebastiano Mutizi tells these youngsters their work is ending because of US President Trump's rule that stops charities like this receiving American funding if they advise on abortion. Além, nós como Amodefa, como instituição, não vamos seguir com o programa, mas tudo isto tem a ver com a questão da política ligada ao gag rule deste novo governo dos republicanos nos Estados Unidos da América. Amodefa has been working here since 1989. Two-thirds of their funding comes from the US government. But because of their opposition to President Trump's order on mentioning abortion, that will now end. For the young volunteers, it appears to make no sense. Our People and Power investigation took us across this nation to witness the effects of the new US administration rule and the questions it raises. How USA, America, is doing this when they are shouting for the rights of the people? It's completely uh, unjust, uh, unjust against human rights, completely. It was one of President Trump's first acts in office with a sweep of the presidential pen, an executive order on foreign aid and abortion. That's it. Thank you, Pat. Thank you very much. Four months later came details of how the policy, protecting life and global health assistance, would apply. A charity that now wants US funds must not perform or actively promote abortion as a method of family planning in foreign countries, including counseling, advice and information regarding the benefits and or availability of abortion as a method of family planning. Opponents immediately called it a global gag rule. For Trump supporters, the order was a major victory from a pro-life president. We are the pro-life generation! We to protect the unborn, I have reinstated a policy first put in place by President Ronald Reagan. The rule on foreign aid and abortion has been a political seesaw for successive US administrations. Introduced by President Reagan, it was repealed by President Clinton, reintroduced by President Bush, rescinded by President Obama. But critics say this newest version, President Trump's version, 
goes far beyond anything that's happened before. Crucially, President Trump's rule extends to a far larger range of international aid programmes. For example, charities working to combat HIV and other infectious diseases will no longer get US aid if they advise on abortion. And the new policy affects a US foreign aid budget of over $8.8 .8 billion. Over 130 NGOs have condemned the Trump order, including global names like Save the Children and Population Action International. The US administration has briefed that they are committed to helping women and children thrive. Shouldn't you just take them at their word on that? If this administration was truly concerned about protecting life, they wouldn't have enacted this policy and they certainly wouldn't have expanded it in the way that they did. Because we know from past iterations of this policy, maternal deaths increase, um, unsafe abortions increase. This is not gonna help women thrive and it's certainly not gonna help children thrive in the absence of no mother. It may be early days in terms of President Trump's new order, but in Mozambique, we found disturbing evidence about how it will affect work on critical HIV prevention. It's been estimated up to 13% of people aged between 15 and 49 here are living with HIV, and that the epidemic has led to over 600,000 orphans. Palmira Tembe's husband and some of her children have died. Five grandchildren are now dependent on her, as well as her 13-year-old son, Nelson. Amodefa has received funds to help people like Palmyra disclose to their families that they have HIV and to support their care. Today she's visited by nurse Albertina from the charity, who's become a family friend. Before you've met nurse Albertina, could you talk about your HIV status? How important is it to know that you can look after yourself, Nelson? Half an hour's car journey away, 51-year-old widow Perestera Yukueo is proud of her flourishing garden and the money it brings in from selling her produce. But she told us none of this would have been possible if an amo deaf nurse hadn't told doctors to treat her. <laughs> Charity workers have kept up their home care visits to check on Perestera's health and her nutrition. Today, the welcome donation of porridge to supplement the family diet. From feeling like an outcast, Perestera says these charity workers are now her friends. But there's something else on her mind. As we were filming, we learned that Amodefa were facing the prospect of closing this and other HIV projects as a result of defying the Trump policy. For project leader Marcelo Cantu, the consequences were clear. 
porque nós vamos ter gerações doentes que não sabem do que que tem e correm o risco de passarem a transmitir para as outras populações, porque não vão saber que tem o HIV SIDA. Então, nós estamos a condenar a nossa sociedade a viver doente e vamos ter aqui óbitos incontroláveis. A Modefa é uma membro association of the International Planned Parenthood Federation. The stance both organizations have taken against the Trump order means that Amodefa will lose $2 million of U.S. funding. So why are they prepared to forfeit this U.S. money? Why couldn't you just sign and forget about the abortion issue? Bom, o aborto até pode parecer uma parte pequena do programa, mas ela é muito importante para nós, porque as mulheres são livres de eh, decidirem se querem ou não continuar com a gravidez. For activists we talk to, opposing the Trump order is not only about upholding the principle of a woman's choice. It's about free speech and a law introduced to save lives. Mozambique liberalized its law on abortion in 2014, not least due to the high numbers of deaths from illegal, unsafe terminations. But for some, changing the law was just a first step. Campaigner and doctor Ivania Barata told us it's now essential to spread the message that safe, legal abortion is now an option in Mozambique, up until 12 weeks of pregnancy. Quer a gente admita ou não, o aborto está a acontecer. O aborto inseguro está a perigar a vida de muita gente. 11% da mortalidade materna aqui em Moçambique, no geral, é por causa do aborto inseguro. The Trump policy means not only are charities unable to counsel on abortion if they want U.S. funds. On top of this, America will cease funding other health work if charities like Amodefa are using their own money from other sources to provide legal abortion services. Amodefa says the risk of unsafe terminations means they're not prepared to censor the advice they give. What will happen is that people will uh, be pregnant, people will decide to have abortion, and because they are not informed about what's the law about abortion in the country, what are the possibilities, what are the facilities we have in the country, if there is no one to give them this information, those people will go for unsafe abortion, and those people will die. Down a bumpy road on the outskirts of the capital, a charity called ICRH is holding an outreach event at a rural school as part of Mozambique's National Safe Abortion Day. It's a chance to learn about contraception and the dangers of unsafe terminations. But like other charities who've received US funds, they too will face a decision on whether to sign up to the new policy. We don't really see how we can sign because ICRH's mission is really to improve reproductive and sexual health and rights. In Mozambique, safe abortion is now legal. We are trying to provide comprehensive services to young people in particular so that they can protect their health and realize their reproductive rights. 45% of the population here is under 15. <laughs> Mozambique is one of 25 countries targeted by the US in a bid to reduce maternal and child deaths worldwide. As a result, millions of dollars of aid have poured in. Now the fear is of a wider impact if US funds are lost. The concern is that the loss of US funds will not only impact on services like HIV prevention and family planning, but may have unforeseen consequences, affecting a range of services that NGOs provide. Things like helping young girls back to school, advice on nutrition, basic support on hygiene and clean water supply, work that NGOs have been doing in this country for many, many years. Nearly 3,000 students attend this large school in the province of Gaza. 
since Amodefa began their work here, advising on contraception. They say they've seen the rate of teenage pregnancies fall and more girls able to continue their education. It's a project that's caught everyone's imagination. volunteers sang about the future, the reality, the clinic Amodefa set up here was due to close three days after we filmed, along with nine more in this province alone. In Maputo province, Raquel Sambo takes her 14-year-old daughter for a checkup. Rita's baby is due in two months. Raquel told us how Amodefa persuaded the authorities to let her pregnant daughter stay at school. But now, as she is now entering the school, I know that one day she can also be like other people. And there's a further way this family has been supported. For the past eight months, Rita and Raquel have had no access to running water. That means a long walk to gather supplies. Amodefa have told them how to add a purifying liquid when they bring their cans home to make the river water safe. Keeping Rita in school, advice about safe water, all this, Raquel says, has transformed their lives. Still sure I'll put the door sound. Eu estou vendo muita família aqui já. Eu parece que não estou vivendo aqui no mundo. Parece já estou estou lá no céu, porque o coração já está mesmo livre. Obrigado. The support this family has received from Amodefa may also be under threat in the coming months as a result of the charity's decision that it can't, in conscience, sign up to the Trump policy. Even though the US policy is still being rolled out, the evidence we were finding here raised disturbing questions. The effect of the Trump order already potentially devastating. Nowhere more so than when it comes to combating the ravages of tuberculosis, a disease rife here in the Mozambique province of Nampula. At a local hospital, worker Maria Teresa de Fatima is in despair. Amodefa's contribution to a TB outreach project is ending because of the Trump order. Sinceramente, eu estou a arrepiar o corpo. Faz me assim quando eu ouço falar dessa situação do Trump, essa política do Trump. Eu penso que é anti-humano para mim. A verdade é que para nós Para nós, o povo, vai ser uma catástrofe. É catástrofe. As part of the US flagship program Challenge TB, a Modefa worker, Casilda Nimarco, travels hundreds of kilometers to remote communities far from public health facilities. The aim to test for tuberculosis and provide medication. Today, Casilda is in Cuvolo. Workers have spent many months here, gaining the trust and then the gratitude of villagers. <laughs> Albino Louis told us he owed his life to Amodefa's support. Later, the journey over and after our visit, we learnt more about Albino Louis, the patient we met. Outubro, we will say that October is the project. Sem poder continuar o tratamento. Passado dois meses, ele já está a tirar sangue, já está os pulmões todos furados e acaba morrendo. 
Então, eu não sei. Pronto. De tuberculose, quilo. É? É, vai morrer, morre mesmo. Não, não, não tem outra solução. É morte. Life is winning again in America. Leading charities have made their own estimates about the human cost of defying the new pro-life policy. In January this year, Mary Stopes International suggested without alternative funding, the loss of their services worldwide could mean 21,700 maternal deaths in President Trump's first term of office. The US charity WaterAid also opposes the new Trump rule. They say they now fear for a range of WaterAid projects in Africa and what this might mean. And we do expect that women and girls will die as a result of reduced access to very basic services that they need to survive and thrive. Things like um, education about why it's important to wash your hands to prevent illness and making sure that you have access to water. The net effect of this policy is likely to be three steps backwards. And three steps backwards in terms of funding and policy translates into lives lost. We hope to interview a spokesperson from the US administration about the issues raised in this film. Despite two months of asking, nobody was available. Instead, USAID supplied us with a statement. It said the policy does not reduce the amount of global health assistance the US government makes available. Departments and agencies will reprogram to other organizations any funding they would have awarded to NGOs that do not agree to the conditions. It added that it was also important to note that this policy does not limit foreign NGOs from treating injuries or illnesses caused by illegal or legal abortions. On suggestions the policy could lead to an increase in unsafe abortions and maternal deaths, we were pointed towards data being collected for a US State Department review. So we asked what data was being collected the response, they didn't have anything else to add. As we went to air, the US State Department review has still not been published. Charities like Amodefa are now seeking new partners and new sources of funding. Worldwide, one initiative has seen 10 governments, along with other donors, raising $430 million for organizations who may lose US money. But America remains the world's largest bilateral donor to global health programs, and the fear is that it could be hard to replace the sheer scale of aid that may be lost as a result of the Trump policy. Vocês acham justo que nós paremos de falar sobre o aborto? Não. Vocês acham justo que nós paremos de prover serviços sobre o aborto? Não. Painful as it is, these volunteers remain convinced the stand they've taken is the right thing to do. The message of this song, the importance of spreading education, information. Amudefa have now told those affected about the closure of their projects, and they're urgently looking at alternative ways to help people. When it comes to what the future holds, from one worker, a message to Donald Trump. A única mensagem que eu tenho para ele é dizer para ele que ele tenha um pouco de compaixão, pensar naqueles que estão a precisar, olhar para nós como pessoas que somos iguais a ele. Convido a ele, I invite him to come here and see. Talvez ele vendo pessoalmente, ele pode mudar de ideia.